Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the Mid-South Wrestling Review Series for the 26th of November, uh, of uh, May. Yeah, jumping to November already? Not quite. No. Uh, May 2000, uh, 1984. We'll get there eventually. Anyway, um, we're kind of moving towards the benefit of the uh, last stampede and all that comes with that. Uh, Magnum TA and Wrestling 2 uh, from May 13th at the Tulsa State Fairgrounds in clipped format. Um, and we kind of see Magnum with the hip toss and uh, big body slams across the way. Ultimately, Magnum uh, is probably the biggest star in the area. Uh, Wrestling 2 tries to take him down for a bit here and doesn't get everything he wants. They brawl to the outside. Fairground's a pretty big place to do wrestling, especially in the, let's say, late spring, early summer, or through the summer months. So probably, usually about May to September, October. You can get, depending on where you are in the country, you can you can get some fairgrounds. And fairground shows are great because you're paid for them, but you don't really necessarily have to uh, have to go, you know, in a, in a direction where you're losing a lot of advertising. Matter of fact, many dying territories will look for fair shows. Many uh, independent shows are done at fairs too, just for group entertainment. You you pay the you're paid a flat fee by the fair, and at least you're not losing money on the show. Needless to say, uh, brawl on the inside for a couple of minutes, and Wrestling 2 comes out ahead on that for a little while. Uh, Magnum TA fi- does eventually fire back up and does so successfully. Um, hard shots by Magnum. Magnum manages to do everything he can to kind of fire back there. Um, so... Attempted pinfalls, and Magnum actually spends the next several minutes just doing punches. I mean, Wrestling 2 finally getting, I guess, his comeuppance, for lack of a better term. Double double down and uh, double shots to the, the top of the head. Uh, Magnum goes a little wide with, with one shot or another, but uh, doesn't get everything he wants there. Ref goes down, and again, uh, the... The uh, shots there, miscommunication, and a roll up, and another ref in, one, two, three, Magnum gets your victory here. Rolls out and gets uh, going anyway. Uh, we move to Sonny King. Sonny King comments on the benefits or lack thereof of Butch Reed, and there's my phone, so I will be back in two shakes of a lamb's tail right here. And I mean the the... the basis of of what we're doing here uh in mid-south is continuing to be positive um ultimately you know there's a lot of things going on in this time in the mid-south area that are um some would say contradictory um in so much as we're kind of moving forward you know into that into that range into that area where the um, the tag teams are taking over, um, Junkyard Dog leaving, I don't know that he's officially left yet, I don't think so, I think that comes in a month or two, but that has a major impact on the area, uh, the Rock and Roll Midnight Express, um, is, is a central thing, anyway, Sonny King is here, he, uh, you know, talks about, uh, the, basically the undertones of, of Butch Reed being a racist, the undertones of Butch Reed being... Um, you know, doing the tar and feathering thing that he's been doing, painting the yellow streak. Well, actually, more accurately, that. Um, with the junkyard dog and that not being good for uh, anyone. And, I mean, they don't out and out call him a racist, but at the same time, that's kind of what it is. Um, the, the use of ether in the, or the, the inference of ether in the, Midnight Express rock and roll thing with the, with the shift of the titles is pretty major. Obviously, Jim Cornette and the Midnight Express being a major team and, and kind of see that going forward as a major thing. Um, that that match, though, we're going to get to in a second. And, I mean, you ultimately see Cornette, 
who is probably easily one of the top three managers of all time. I think Bobby Heenan's in that conversation. I think Paul Heyman's in that conversation. I think Heenan, Cornette, and Heyman, if you put that three together, uh, you'd have a you'd have a really hard time knocking one of those three off top three in, in rotation. But again, the Midnight Express, probably one of the top five tag teams of all time. Certainly uh, top five of the television era uh, of the 80s and 90s. And I know there are people that would make arguments for modern-day tag teams. I don't think there is an argument for modern-day teams. As we go towards that tag team match, though, Bobby Eaton daring and wearing white pants, which is just weird to me. Um, Anyway, we kind of see the cutoff with the Midnight Express. Uh, Gibson starts. Morton comes in. Morton uh, bounces. Bounces around with uh, Condry a bit, tag off again, and we kind of see things going in a hard shot there, and a, a, you know a bit, a bit of a tag off. We we do see that continuation of more, uh, I guess you'd say wonder, uh, hard shots, and ultimately, um, kind of the. The, the go down and uh, the tag off there. Um, and we do see several uh, runs with the Midnight Express and uh, and kind of that, that the side headlights uh, takeovers and all and everything that comes with that. Um, you know, side headlocks by the... Um, by the by the midnights and again you know kind of that go behind that 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 take around and again there we go drop kicks under the chin by uh robert gibson and he manages to be super successful in that way um the tag offs there robert uh ricky morton comes back in and uh the the heels bail out for a while uh, they bail out to kind of regather themselves, for lack of a better term. And we kind of do see continuation of all of that. Uh, short knee and again the uh, elbows to the back of the neck. Um, Condry usually takes the majority of the selling in middle of matches, I've noticed, in this particular uh, duration of the Midnight Express. It seems like Bobby Eaton took that that role over in the later version. Uh, beautiful power, power slam in the middle uh, of, of the match and of the ring there. And I will grab my phone again as it is going off. Uh, and I will return momentarily. And again, we kind of see that for what it is. The, the, the Midnight Express... Uh, exchange is without a doubt probably the best tag team work that Mid South has seen, and again, you know the the uh, the the cinch up on the arms and all of the more basic tag team stuff that the Midnights are willing to do. Um, it does look like at this point the Midnight Express is kind of on the rocks, and we see kind of the cut off of the. The drop kick and, and Ricky Morton does a good bit of selling here. That is to be expected, and ultimately, um, you know, uh, there is a a passed out version, for lack of a better term, of a uh, Ricky Morton, and and ultimately he's kind of thrown over the well, not fully passed out, but he's thrown over the top rope. The referee doesn't uh, make the call on that, and he kind of he gets back in there. Uh, Cornette comes in, pulls the rope down on Robert Gibson, and again we go more towards the match being, uh, you know, Gibson's sent into the post. Uh, it is a match where things are stopped, and, and Cornette uh, and the Midnights manage to uh, keep things going. Um, some go behind and all of that, and uh, the I guess the ether rag is 
what you would say might be entered in. Jim Jim Ross obviously calls out the Ether Rag in the interview with the Champions Post match, and uh, um, it's uh, an interesting angle. I don't know that it's been done before. If it had, certainly not in that territory in the recent years. I'm sure that the Ether Rag was done before 1984, but at the same time, for the time, it was a novel finish. Um, speaking of novel buddy uh, Lando, against Mark Reagan is up next. Reagan is uh, novel because he's kind of uh, a guy who they have bigger plans for, kind of doing the, the, the jumping around, being more flexible, athletic, and kind of doing the breakdancing thing, kind of being there to be, uh, you know, seen for what he can see. In other words, going in the direction of trying to move forward to the best of his ability in that way. Drop kick under the chin by Reagan. And we see uh, some tackles along the way. Um, Landell sends him over the top rope into the floor. And, and again, Landell really kind of kicks at him. And, and you know, the match is kind of halted by the the underhandedness. Uh, we see um, Sonny King make his way in and Butch Reed... Uh, after the uh, issues earlier mentioning what happened to the dog. And then we see Mr. Re new Mr. Wrestling 2 uh, addressing Magnum TA. And I'm defending the, Mr. The, the original Wrestling 2 with the threats of that going forward. So ultimately, we close May with the Midnight Express back on top. A continuation of the Wrestling 2 issues uh, there and, and all of that. And we will be back with more, hopefully tonight, also uh, the last NXT and the last AEW of the year. Uh, hope to have those up within the next little while, too. But uh, um, stay with us. 2021 going to be the year where we hopefully get a whole bunch of content out for you in this old school vein. Uh, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.